This is my multimeter gauntlet. It's a homemade device for precisely checking the accuracy of test equipment like multimeters. In this video, I'll explain what it is, why I built it, and how I built it so that you can build your own. If you're only interested in certain aspects of it, make sure you check the description below for the relevant timestamps. Before all that though, I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Kai Wheats. They have sent me these two multimeters for review, and they're so confident in their value that they've agreed to let me build this precision tester to test their meters with. Make sure to check the video description for the links to their Amazon stores. So why would I need a device like this? Well, I can easily do the feels good in the hands portion of a multimeter review. I've been using multimeters professionally for about 15 years now. That's not exactly what you, the consumer, would really want to know. You want to know how much bang do you get for your buck. Well, one of these factors is precision. Uh, buying the benchtop lab-grade precision testers could cost upwards of $10,000. So I figured out a way to get pretty darn close for a fraction of the price. Sort of like a, fine, I'll do it myself type of thing. Reputable suppliers like Mouser and DigiKey sell resistors with a 0.01% tolerance, capacitors with up to 1% tolerance. These components are quite pricey, but precision comes at a cost. On top of those, the AD584 Precision Reference module from eBay uh, can be had for a reasonable price as well and gives us a range of precision voltages. You put them together and you have a precision set of resistances, voltages, and capacitances to check your meter against. With a little bit of cleverness, you can also get a precision current source by combining these elements together. Everything you see here can be had and put together for 100 to 150 bucks. Not bad if you ask me. My component selection was pretty straightforward. I selected precision resistances between 10 ohms and 100 K ohms in order to give me a good range of measurement. That range being 10 ohms, 100 ohms, 1K, 10K, and 100K ohms. The only hitch in here is that the 10 ohm resistors were only available in 0.1% accuracy and the rest in 0.01%. This means that for this specific range, we're going to lose an order of magnitude of precision. That should be fine because 0.1% accuracy is well above hobby levels of precision. And since all my meters under test will run the same gauntlet, it should still work out just fine. For capacitance, however, I was limited by what was in stock once again, choosing 100 nanofarads and 82 nanofarads with a 1% tolerance. 0.5% variances were available, but for around 10 times the price, and I know when to draw the line. The AD584 module can already output extremely precise voltages at 10 volts, 7.5 volts, 5 volts, and 2.5 volts. So that has our typical hobbyist ranges well covered as well. For the physical build, I felt that electrical connections made via binding posts with their nickel plating, which is corrosion resistant and relatively low resistance, were a good candidate. I elected to directly solder the resistors to the binding posts in order to ensure the ideal electrical connections that won't loosen over time. The same was done with the capacitors, but these were secured to the case with hot glue to prevent vibrations and knocks from damaging their connections. The AD584 module was simply mounted on one end with nylon spacers and nylon nuts and bolts using the module's pre-existing holes. As for current, well, I added another binding post in the middle of the AD584's battery hole and soldered a removable wire to the precision positive connection. That goes to a 4mm banana plug which plugs directly into the binding post. Under the binding post, I ran a wire to one side of the 100K, 10K, and 1K ohm resistors which allows up to 1 milliamp to flow to test small currents in multimeters. I wanted to stay well far away from the AD584's theoretical maximum current handling capabilities of 20 milliamps, and I didn't want any of the flowing current to heat up the precision resistors in any way. Measuring current accurately is by far the most difficult task a multimeter can do, and so I would expect results within 5-10% to of perfection to be very respectable. For the labeling, my wife had already designed my logo in Inkscape, but I asked her to tackle making me a gauntlet for this project as well. I made the little multimeter logo and attempted to print it all in a Cricut on white vinyl, which failed as the vinyl I used did not hold the marker ink. I ran the job again on printer paper and then used glue stick to adhere the labels to the box, which might be replaced later on. We'll have to see. All that's left now is to take it for a test drive, so let me show you how this works. Um. But I won't be using these meters, you're just going to have to wait for the review, which is upcoming in the next couple of weeks. 
make sure you're subscribed. We're going to be using this multimeter here, which is my trusty Canadian Tire multimeter, which uh, most of you commenters are giving me crap because there's no way that this thing is precise enough to be used in hobby settings. Well, I guess you're about to be proven right or you're about to be proven wrong. So let's start with resistance range. This is auto ranging, so this should be simple enough. We just grab the probes and pop them in. This is the 10 ohm range. Gonna hold them down. Huh. Bang on. Let's go to 100 ohms. That's pretty close. I can see it's a little inaccurate, but I mean, that's close. 1K. Oh, bang on. And this is with the cheap leads that it comes with, by the way. 10K. Look at that. Bang on. And 100K. Oh, just, just a whiff off. So close. So, not bad meter, right? Uh, and then we flip it around this way to do the capacitance. I genuinely haven't tested this before this video, by the way. Okay, this is supposed to be 82, and it's showing 83.34. That's actually just over the 1%. This one's 100 nano. Again, just over the 1%, so really not bad. Still pretty respectable. Now, in order to check the voltage reference, uh, you do have to warm this up. Spec says you have to warm this up for a couple of hours, uh, but I've found that just having it on for, I don't know, 10 minutes makes it pretty good. So I'll bring you back in 10 minutes. It's been a couple minutes and I think we're good to go. So I'll put this on to DC volts and give this a test. It's on 10 volt setting. Uh, that's pretty close, but that is out of spec for sure. Out of spec by about 20 millivolts. Not bad actually for hobbyist use, but it isn't a precise meter. Move these jumpers over. We should have seven and a half volts now. Again, 20 millivolts low, and I'm pretty sure this is this meter. Gonna move this again on the five volt setting now. Ooh, look at that. We're within uh, seven millivolts. It's not bad. Within five millivolts on the 2.5 volt range. So this meter is perfectly adequate for especially hobbyist use. Let me show you how the current works. Uh, I've tested this in the 10 volt range before just to make sure that we do get a current out. I used a different meter so this one will be different. As for current, well, like I said, it's very difficult for a multimeter to accurately register tiny currents. So that's what this gauntlet will achieve. I had to bring in a ringer because the other multimeter just would not do it. So as you can see, we already have an offset of about three to four um, microamps, actually 0 0.02, 0 0.03 microamps. And so if I just check like so, No different than the noise. If I check like so, there we go. Now we get 0 0.06, 0 0.07 microamps. And if we check like so, we get just so close to the one milliamp that it should be flowing. So 0.92. So this one is acceptable, but for low currents, this one was not. And so there you have it. I have my very own multimeter gauntlet and you now know how to make your own and I hope if you do make your own let me know in the comments below if you have ideas for version 2 of this multimeter gauntlet like I do leave them in the comments below as well and a special thanks again to Kaiweets who are so confident that their meters are good bang for the buck that they sponsored me to build this tester which I will test their meters on if you want to see those reviews, make sure you're subscribed. They are coming soon. And if you just can't wait and want to buy one to come along with me for the journey, then check the links in the video description. Either way, 
Thanks for watching.